the reason for this meeting because a lot of the people in the area had concerns about uh, the park designation, the National Monument. So we, I, I asked Mayor Bell to come down. He's always supportive of the district and what we're doing down here, and he wants to help. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Bell, and then we have a few other people that are going to speak after him. Thank you, Q. First of all, good evening to everyone. It's always a pleasure for me to be here at the historic Carver Theater as well as in the 4th Avenue District. Uh, I come down this way just about every week. Uh, even though Q is no longer on 4th Avenue, I still uh, come through here. Uh, let me just start out by saying that as mayor, I know it's my responsibility to move this city forward in every aspect, uh, that people expect us to do the things necessary to uh, improve the quality of life in the city. As I walked in the Carver Theater and looked at the plaque on the wall, uh, just like with the uh, Civil Rights Institute, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and honored that my name is on that wall with a, a number of other people. It wasn't William Bell, alone, it wasn't Dick Arrington alone, but it was collaboration of a lot of people that preserved this building as well as saw the vision of creating a civil rights institute that would preserve the legacy of the civil rights movement here in our area. Um, at the time that we decided to look into um, uh, whether or not we could be a part of the National Park Service, it was spawned by a news article that was written probably some three and a half years ago that talked about the A.G. Gaston Motel. And I, I see one or two people in here that commented in that article about the dilapidated condition of the hotel. At the time, uh, I wasn't even aware that uh, the city of Birmingham owned the hotel. But I was quickly made aware of it by the article and the article talked about the fact that Dr. King uh, stayed there at the hotel during the civil rights um, uh, uh, movement here in Birmingham and that it was the, um, the headquarters for all of the activities that were going on. We were in the process of planning the 50th uh, commemoration of 1963, a year that was filled with um, a lot of turmoil in our city, a, city, uh, a, a, a year that was marked by uh, civil strife uh, of African Americans uh, working to achieve parity or equality with their white counterparts in this city. And so the hotel had not just an economic uh, history to it, but it had a civil rights history uh, from that standpoint. Um, at the time, and many, many of you may recall that at the time, we were just coming out of uh, a recession here at the city of Birmingham. When I took over the city of Birmingham, we were $78 million uh, in the red. Uh, we had to work to try to overcome that deficit in 2010. 2011, we didn't have much of an uh, economic growth. Uh, 2012 was the same thing. The whole economy was flat, and the city was not growing. So when it was laid on my doorstep that we owned a dilapidated building that had uh, historical value to the city. I was caught in a quandary. Um, we were criticized by many of the, on the city council as to what we weren't doing and why we didn't uh, uh, think enough to try to save that building down there. I made a commitment to the council and to the public that we would look into uh, doing something about the condition of the A.G. Gaston uh, uh, Motel and that we would uh, move forward to try to satisfy uh, the concerns that the public had about letting the building fall in disrespair, uh, disrepair. At the same time, we had gotten word from the leadership at the uh, Civil Rights Institute that it also had some problems and it had some issues. And therefore, we could not commit funds to the A.G. Gasson uh, Motel because we had other issues there at the Civil Rights Institute that we also had to address. And there were just a cascade of other issues that required funding and money and things of that nature. And we were unable to really set aside any funds to deal with uh, 
of the situation at the AG Gaston Motel. Uh, during that period of time, I went to the public and asked the public to support a bond referendum uh, for some $150 million. And that in that bond package were some uh, funds that would go towards uh, the upkeep and renovation of many of our buildings, including the Civil Rights Institute uh, and some other public buildings that existed. Uh, on a trip to Washington, D.C., uh, well, let me back up. There was a, a conversation that was had on one of the uh, national television shows in which uh, the, one of the gentlemen that was speaking was a lieutenant of Dr. King, and he made the statement that much of the planning for the uh, March on Washington was held right there at the uh, A.G. Gaston Motel. He said this on national TV. Uh, and someone made the comment that, yes, uh, Birmingham, that this country owes a debt of gratitude to Birmingham. And that stuck in my mind because Birmingham is known all across the world for its civil rights movement, uh, the letter from the Birmingham jail, and uh, the attention that Dr. King and Fred Shuttlesworth brought to this community. Uh, and it was said that if you broke the back of segregation here in Birmingham, then you would break the back of segregation throughout the South. And that was true, a true statement. Well, uh, we, we, we had some meetings in Washington, D.C. to talk about uh, how we could preserve that building. And we came upon the idea that maybe if we could get it involved with the National Park Service, that that would be a way to provide some funding that uh, we could address the issue uh, not just now, but on into the future. Uh, the first meeting that we had with the National Park Service did, did not go well. They told us, forget about it. They were not interested that, uh, one, we didn't have the time or the money or the wherewithal uh, to do all the legwork necessary to uh, uh, get it in a position that it could become a part of the National Park Service. Uh, well, not one to take no, we set about the task of figuring out what it would take to, at the time, make the AG Gas and Motel a part of the National Park Service. And then we started thinking, well, not just the AG Gas and Motel, but the uh, Kelly Ingram Park, 16th Street Baptist Church, which had already been recognized by the National Park Service, uh, the Civil Rights Institute, and the 4th Avenue um, uh, District. Uh, as you know, during that period, period of time, there were a lot of meetings that were going on down here in the district uh, that pertained to uh, the civil rights movement. Uh, you had people like Shelley Stewart and um, uh, uh, Reverend Erskine Fosh, uh, Tall Paul, a number of other radio uh, DJs at the time that were sending out coded messages via the radios, that, and most of the stations were located down here. I think at one time WJLD was located up on the mountain, but then it moved down in this area. So this area had a great historic value. And when we started talking in terms of creating a civil rights trail, uh, which included Bethel Baptist Church in, uh, in Collegeville, it included uh, structures in uh, Smithfield, and all throughout this city, um, uh, again, we, we got the interest of people as we began to tell the story because they could not relate to the story of what happened. And I know St. Paul was in, involved uh, in, in, in the civil rights movement. A number of churches were involved uh, throughout this city. And we were trying to create a civil rights trail as well as creating an opportunity to be recognized internationally through UNESCO as a World Heritage Trail. Because when you hear about struggle and strife going, going on throughout the world, they always reference what happened right here in, in Birmingham. Uh, uh, those of you who got a little gray hair in your head, uh, you, you may recall Gil Scott Heron talking about Johannesburg and Birmingham. Uh, that's the kind of international recognition and impact that we were having. So as we got the structure uh, and got information, gathered information as to what it would take to um, be a part of the National Park Service, uh, we went and sat down with Congresswoman Sewell. And I know Chastity is here, and she can speak on behalf of the uh, Congresswoman's office. Uh, we, we went and sat down with uh, the Congresswoman and her staff to let her know what we were doing and why we wanted to do it. And at the time, she was working on the effort to get, a, um, get congressional recognition for the four little girls of which she was successful in getting that uh, designation 
of a uh, congressional gold medal being issued in their honor. Uh, she gave us guidance and she indicated that she would uh, submit to the Congress, put together a uh, congressional bill that would designate uh, Birmingham as part of the National Park, uh, the Civil Rights District as part of the National Park uh, and, and create a National Park. Uh, she worked diligently to get the support of the entire delegation from the state of Alabama. Now, I recognize the fact she's the only Democrat in the group, but she did get the support of, of the delegation uh, the con uh, on the congressional side, and she got support of people like John Lewis and other individuals who were a part of the civil rights movement here in this uh, uh, area. Um, for various reasons, the clock was ticking. The clock was running out on us, and we, we, we harpened, harpened back to what the uh, two gentlemen that we first met had said, that we didn't have enough time. Well, uh, the congresswoman worked as hard as, she could, as hard as she could in order to get the National Park designation for the Civil Rights District, but the time ran out, and then you had a presidential election, and a lot of things got, got stalled in the process. But we, we had one other option that we were talking with the White House uh, and uh, the president's office, the president, as well as his staff, uh, in terms of a national monument. Now, both a national park and national monument are ran and operated uh, by the National Park Service. Uh, the difference between the two is that Congress recognized national parks. They're the ones that uh, uh, has to vote in order for an area to become part of the National Park si uh, System. Uh, under the Antiquities Act, which was passed, I don't know if it was under Roosevelt. Uh, was it under Roosevelt? Yeah, yeah, yeah not, not uh, uh, FDR, but uh, Theodore Roosevelt, that gave the president the power to, um, with his signature, to designate an area as a national monument. And so we were working a two-track uh, 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 program whereby if we didn't get the National Park uh, um, designation that we could get the uh, National Monument designation by the stroke of the president pen. Well, it's not as simple as just the president saying, okay, let me sign. There are a lot of legal technicalities that you have to go through, a lot of uh, um, uh, planning, a lot of uh, uh, detail gathering of information on structures, uh, a willingness of the parties involved to be a part of the National Monument uh, program. And so we had to go through all of that process. We met with uh, Reverend Price at 16th Street Baptist Church to make him aware and his church members aware as to what was going on with the National Park uh, designation. Now, some people were under the impression that uh, this would be a taking of property, that if you uh, became part of the national park uh, system, whether as a park or a national monument, that that would then give the federal government the right to come in and take your property. Well, that is not true. Uh, some people were spreading that, and that's not true at all. Uh, in fact, um, in order to become part of the National Park Service, whether well, monument or park service, the uh, national park has to own a part of uh, the property, and that portion with which they own is part of the parking lot, or is it what two or three lots within the um, uh, AG Gas Motel? But outside of the motel footprint, no part of the uh, uh, of the property that has been designated as part of the national monument, whether you're talking about 16th Street Baptist Church. Kelly, Kelly Ingram Park, the 4th Avenue Business District, the Civil Rights Institute, no part of that, those uh, 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 locations have an ownership by the National Park Service. It's only in the A.G. Gaston Motel. Now, what's the benefit of, of getting all of that? And it, and it came down to the last minute signature of the president uh, because of having to gather all the title information as it relates to uh, the portion by which they would, uh, they would uh, gain ownership. Uh, the title on many of that land had not been surveyed properly. When I say that land, I'm referring to the A.G. Gas Motel. We had to separate the parcels out from the rest of the hotel. We had to determine 
what portion of the structure would remain uh, and what portion was in such terrible condition that it uh, could no longer uh, be a part of, uh, of the future facility. And there were just a number of loose ends that we were able to overcome, but it took us up to the last minute to get all the information in a package form to submit to the White House for the President's review and his signature. Uh, in the meantime, there were also some economic benefits that uh, under the National Park uh, auspices, they will be allocating funds to the National Park uh, Monument area for uh, upkeep and maintenance of those public spaces. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're going to come in and give each business a ton of money and say, go do this, go do that. What it does mean, it will make uh, businesses eligible to receive funding through application process through various departments. Let's say if you're a small business uh, and you want to try to get funding through the SBA, it will give you a leg up over any other business because you're in a uh, part of the National Monument uh, area that you uh, uh, may get favorable treatment. Now, you still got to do everything that anybody else does, but in a competitive situation, it gives you a leg up in terms of get, getting access to funds to uh, keep your business up uh, and running. But in terms of the maintenance of uh, the property that's uh, part of the A.G. Gaston, the National Park Service will uh, have funding set aside for that purpose, and it will go on in, per in perpetuity. Uh, as long as it's, uh, this country has national monuments and national parks, we will receive funding for the A.G. Gaston Motel. Uh, there were some other funds that were sent down to different organizations, and uh, we'll be eligible for those funding. Uh, but we will have to continue to be vigilant, continue to apply, and continue to look for ways that we can um, uh, incorporate our efforts in the national effort to revitalize this district and to bring more people into the area. And that's the other key element. Many of you uh, may own uh, retail businesses or, or, or businesses that depend on people coming to you. Well, I think, uh, what does the, uh, Andrea, what does the Civil Rights Institute generate in terms of the number of people? Is it 125,000 a year? 150,000? Well, we expect that to grow uh, tremendously with this National Monument designation. Uh, in the past, we've had people, they would do day trips. They'd come here, visit in the, uh, day, in the morning and afternoon, and then they take off and either spend the night in Montgomery or spend the night in Selma, somewhere like that. We're trying to capture those dollars and keep those people in this area. And we're going to be doing some things to spruce this area up uh, so that it becomes more attractive so that when people do come, they will venture out into the business area. They will spend more money. They will, we, will, we will try to increase uh, their day visit into overnight stays that will, again, bring more dollars into the area that will help benefit everyone.